I, you're chomping at the bit, and I am too, to get to this conference that you were at in August. Right. Um, in in this Denmark, is a, was it? Copenhagen? Yeah, no, it was in Alberg. Uh, it was a uh, the Audio Engineering Society Headphone Technology Conference. It was all papers on headphones. Basically, they are in the, the, the research community is in the midst of what amounts to a revolution for headphones in that everybody is trying to create this illusion of sound coming from outside your head. And this is a very difficult problem to solve. We've talked about it before. We've talked about the Smith Realizer before. And mm -hmm. uh, really what has to happen is you must have a, a, a customized head-related transfer function, which is the data set of the way sound sounds when it comes from all different angles around your head. So you have to have your a head, which is different than my head. Each head right. is individual. So a number of the papers presented at the conference were different ways to make that possible and more speedy. Uh, for example, uh, there was one guy who puts a speaker in the, in the middle of a grid that's on a wall and then puts a, a tracker, a, a device that has a tracker on the top and then has little microphones that go in your ears. And then they, they start a bunch of test tones on the speaker and you just look around in circles at this, you know, grid on the wall and kind of make sure you cover the grid and it acquires all the data necessary to compute a head related transfer function. So that and has to be done with a speaker out in the room. Yes. And but it would be something that that, for example, an eyeglass store or a hearing aid store could install because it just needs a little space on a wall in a room. Oh, so okay. uh, uh, so that would be one way to get HRTFs. But the more likely way, it seems to me, is they now have ways where you can create 3D models using a cell phone camera. So you use your cell phone camera to to look at something from a bunch of angles. And because it's got gyros and stuff in it and because image processing is so powerful these days, it's able to create a 3D model. And so you can imagine when you open up your phone in the future, you know, that it'll have a little sticky note in there that you can tape to your forehead with a grid on it. And you <laughs> take a picture of your face and then it calculates how far your ears are apart and what the shape of your head is. And then <clears throat> and then you could do this. It does this. You do the same thing next to your ears. You wave it around with a movie and it, and it builds a 3D model of your ears. And then you maybe you type in your height and weight and uh, maybe there's some. Uh, uh, racial differences between ears because there are some uh, some racial differences in physiology that are generalizable. Mm -hmm. And then um, and then from that data, they can synthesize an HRTF because they know the the anthropomorphic con uh, relationship between anthropomorphic measurements and head related transfer functions. Mm -hmm. So they don't actually have to put you in a room with a speaker at all. They just look at your, the shape of your ears and your head and your body and calculate an HRTF. Wow. So, yeah. So there was a number of things on calculating HRTFs. There were a number of things on, on how to reduce data more quickly. One of, the, one of the things at the conference was that all the testing for whether the, the sound is getting outside your head and how effectively it's doing that, none of that can be done with measurements. They have to do subjective studies because hmm. they're asked they're they're trying to get this experience to happen. And that that experience I, doesn't happen for a, a test and measurement system. So what you're and, talking about is wearing headphones and producing a sound that m causes you to believe or to perceive anyway, that the sound right. is coming from outside out in the room where the speakers might be. Absolutely. Or, and if you out in real life. You're, Right. And you're, of course, aware of the, the Microsoft HoloLens, right? Yep. Which yep. can do, do a similar thing where it can superimpose physical objects in space visually. Right? So sort of, that's sort of an AR thing, right? Uh, augmented right. reality thing. Uh, right. Uh, an augmented reality. Um, and so now if you imagine a headphone that has this uh, immersive audio capability and also a, a, a Microsoft HoloLens type uh, visor that can come down. Then in in uh, in real reality, you can be walking around and you can see the Pokemons uh, in the hedges and you can hear <laughs> them giggling and 
you can follow them around. And of course, that's kind of silly. But if you've seen uh, Google Translate, for example, the visual one where you where you hold it up to text and it changes like magically in front of you. Have you seen that? The Google I Translate app? I haven't seen app? that. Yeah, it's amazing. You can hold it up to a sign and put a picture of the image of the sign and the sign will become translated. So now you can imagine you go to a, wow. a, a, a railroad station in Japan. You put your HoloLens down. You look up at the thing and, and all the signs are in English. Uh, you will be able to go, excuse me, where is the uh, train to Tokyo? And then when the uh, after you say it, the headphones will translate. There'll be a little speaker out there and it'll speak it in Japanese to the person. And oh, then the man. person speaking in Japanese will talk back to you and it will be translated on the fly so you hear it what they're saying in English. Man, we're talking about the Star Trek Universal Translator here. Yeah, this is just the beginning. So there were other papers on selective noise canceling. One of the things they can do is they can, if you have, so now imagine in the future something like this that you put in your ear. Uh, there's one more thing I have to say that is another part of this equation. One of the things they have to do is allow you to put a pair of headphones on and have it not change the sound that you're hearing from the regular outside world. In other words, wow. the opposite the opposite of noise canceling, where, <laughs> where they're completely transparent. And that's I mean, very, even, very difficult. Yeah, even, even open back headphones or these open back Audi's uh, in-ear uh, planar magnetics that you were talking about, they do alter the sound coming. You can hear sound coming in from outside, but it's altered in some way because it has to pass around and through the diaphragms and the system of the headphones, right? Right. It comes at your ears at a completely different angle now, and you lose the ability to localize sounds and, and get distance on what the sounds are when you put it on. Yep. So what they think is, is that you put on a pair of headphones and and – It'll be like these, probably a, a little module that you put into your ear and and it'll have microphones in it and it knows your HRTF and it will reconstruct the sounds from outside. This is where the sound is coming from. And then, OK, then it'll reconstruct it using your HRTFs to make it sound like where it's coming from. A very, very difficult problem. So. Uh, 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 but th once they get these things to work w the way they want, it, it will have amazing capabilities. And, and so, for, in for instance, what I was saying about selective noise canceling, you sit down in a room and any sound that has a diffuse spatial characteristic will be canceled. And any sound that is spatially coherent, where they have a very coherent direction and distance, they can amplify so you're sitting in a noisy restaurant or a noisy bar and you have a couple of people sitting around a table with you. And as they talk, their voice is highly coherent because it's coming from right near you. you. That will be let through and then all the rest of the sound will be dimmed, will be because of, Because of active phase cancellation, noise cancellation. Active smart noise cancellation. And wow. you take – yeah, you take it another step further – and, and that is – now, you've got to remember the headphones have gyroscopes in it and are, can know where they are in space. You know, they're, they're like your cell phone that, that way. Yeah, yeah. So you can you – can, you could even do things like you look at a person and say, enter conversation mode. This is Jill. This is Harry. This is Mark. Uh, enter conversation mode. And, and now, because it knows the position of those things, it can, it can do it not only by coherence, but by position. So anything coming from in between the people, it will, will shut out, but sounds coming directly from those people will be enhanced. Now, this is something that people with uh, hearing loss have a very hard time with, being able to I, understand people in loud environments. I was just going to mention that, that, that that's exactly right. If you have hearing right. loss... You go into a into a bar or a restaurant or something, and you're trying to have a conversation with somebody close by. It's extremely difficult. This would be extremely wonderful, difficult. man. Right, right. And and one of the other things at this conference was there were a number of people who were participating in the conference that came from the hearing aid world. And so in future, on the smart headphone side of things, headphones with microprocessors and DSPs and gyros and sweat sensors and temperature sensors and pulse sensors and all this kind of stuff in it, these uh, – uh, uh, well, now I lost track of what I was saying. But these headphones uh, um, uh, will come into existence uh, 
uh, because of the need for all these high tech stuff. Anyway, it's because of the hearing hearing aid. You, you mentioned it oh, because the of the hearing aid thing. People. Right. There was there will be this sort of continuum between prescription hearing aid devices, prescription assisted living device, uh, assisted listening devices. Yeah. Now yeah. you can you can imagine this smart noise canceling. A firefighter could go into a building that's burning, and the noise canceling could reduce. Now, th there's also smart noise canceling, which is it recognizes certain things like Alexa, like the Amazon Echo recognizes when you say Alexa in the room. Well, mm -hmm. they have now smart noise canceling. They're beginning to come out with it where it recognizes your name. So if you're in a bar waiting for them to call your table and somebody says tile, it will allow that word in. So, wow. Right. And so now you, you have a firefighter in a fire with the roaring fire, but the headphone itself is listening for a voice that going help or save me or something like that. And right. it will will amplify that characteristic. You can think of it also in applications in in uh, um, uh, earthquake rescue and things like that. Mm. So um, uh, so there'll be prescription hearing aids for people with hearing loss, prescription uh, assisted listening devices for professionals in various applications and military use, of course. Then there'll be over-the-counter assisted listening devices, which uh, are will kind of be able to perform like hearing aids, but they, they'll start dialing these things into it that I've been talking about. And, and what you're going to see is a merging between smart headphones and assisted listening devices. So uh, we'll we'll start to see headphones get really, really, really smart in the next 10 years. Uh, 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 it's just going to be an amazing time.